Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you're new here, I'm Daniel and you should probably subscribe. I don't know what, what's taking you so long. Anyway, today I'm here with my buddy Anthony and we are talking about the importance of having a cool and unique LinkedIn headshot. Roll that intro. Now I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, use LinkedIn. And even if you don't, that's cool because you can probably use what we're gonna teach you today to provide cool headshots for LinkedIn for other people who do use it. Now one thing I personally have noticed, and I'm sure if you go through LinkedIn you'll notice as well, everybody has the same cookie cutter template for a headshot. You know, it's like the standard lighting, there's a building in the background, it's the same over and over again. It's either that or they've got a picture from their cousin's baptism where they've cropped out their significant other and it's just terrible. Having a unique headshot is going to benefit you in more than one way. Firstly, if you have a unique picture, right away you're going to stand out from the other profiles. If it's the same cookie cutter thing and yours is way different, boom, that's eye catching. Secondly, if you're in a creative field, you're already flexing your creative muscles before anybody's even looked at your profile. However, there is a bit of a line that you can't really cross. I mean, you can't go into LinkedIn and have like some Picasso painting of a profile picture because instead of being eye-catching and flexing your creative muscles, whoever's looking at your profile is thinking, what's wrong with this guy's face? So today, Anthony and I are gonna challenge ourselves to create some unique LinkedIn headshots that'll stand out amongst that cookie cutter crowd. Roll that intro. I already said that. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like bone crush. Boy, I got God, don't fear me. I'm beginning to do more dramatic style shots for maybe like creators or actors. I'm thinking for maybe even musicians even. A straight down light to really put a lot of contrast and shadow on somebody's face is kind of dramatic. It's usually used in like horror films or anything like that to make the subject pop. And now let's see how cool Anthony can make me look. Anthony is like basically like MacGyver for photography equipment. <laughs> It's the same thread. We're like. Figured it out. Don't tell the people at home it was the same thread. You seem smarter this way. I knew it was the same thread the whole time. <laughs> After all that MacGyvering, we have to duct tape it anyway. Look at this guy. Would be an engineer to figure this out. <laughs> Photographers, not engineers. How's the lighting at home? Dramatic. I change location because we're working with short tripod, not a limited amount of space. So we're gonna have to have you to sit like kind of like so. All right, cool. So, Let's move it downstairs. Nice. So a couple adjustments to Anthony's setup because it didn't really fit in my office. Anthony, why don't you take us through what you've changed here? Okay, so we've changed the background. Uh, we actually have a backdrop black. Uh, we're also going to get Dan to sit down because we're having a little bit of a height issue and limitation with this stand. Uh, so by him sitting with a straight background, you won't probably tell that he's sitting if I frame him where he's from his stomach or chest up. Fairly simple setup. You only need one light. We didn't have a tall enough tripod or boom here, so we kind of had to sit on the floor. But what I really did was try to get my subject, Daniel, to move kind of front and back. And as you can see on my hands, the shadows kind of change and it gives you different looks with not moving the lights around, not really moving your subject more than a couple inches back and forth. Even if you don't have a lot of money, any good lighting, you could really just make this out of anything and you get that nice professional look on your profile picture. My second shot, we're gonna try something kind of similar as my first shot with something uh, or light coming straight down. But we're gonna do two different colors, uh, one on my right side of my body and one on my left side. We're gonna start off with uh, blue and orange, maybe even try blue and red, see how it looks. And the goal is to try to get it 50-50 right down my nose and it gives you um, a little bit of an artistic kind of shot. You know what's actually awesome? This, this light right here is just the tungsten normal light. And yeah. It's creating like a really nice orange and blue on your face Nice, right now. am yeah. I getting the 50-50 right 50 down the 50 you look nice. like a stud, wow. Awesome. Okay, so for my take on what Anthony was doing, he got a really nice like teal on one side, orange on the other. 
I still want that split of the orange and teal, but I might try turning his face a bit, having him sit back, sit forward to see how the light bounces and if we can create something cool that way. For mine, I'm gonna do something along the lines of what Anthony did, but a little bit different. I'm gonna have the white backdrop. The subject's gonna be sitting on the stool, but I'm gonna use the strobe light to illuminate the backdrop. My backdrop's gonna be bright red. I'm gonna have some soft lighting on the subject, and I want a hair light coming from the back to just add a tiny little bit of color opposite of what the backdrop's doing. So in this case, I'm going with an orange backdrop. I'm gonna have a blue hair light on the back of the subject, and let's see how it turns out. Might not work out, we might have to play with the lighting a bit, but for my setup, I wanna use the soft boxes and the strobes. Problem is, we're in a kind of confined space, so something you can do to combat this combat this, I don't know, whatever. Something you could do against this is use an ND filter on your lens and set it to a darker. If you wanna shoot at like f2.8 or lower, put that ND filter on, you'll be able to get the light nice and close and still get a perfectly exposed picture. There you have it ladies and gentlemen, those are some unique LinkedIn profile pictures that'll you know make you stand out from the crowd. I hope you like what Anthony and I put together. We had a great time doing it, playing with light, testing different things. We even had some happy accidents, which is gonna kickstart my modeling career. If you like the video, make sure you let me know down below, hit that like button, leave some comments, be like, Dan, I'm gonna try everything you guys tried today, and then I'm gonna tag you on Instagram. I would love that. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Love ya.